Bird migration was one of the wonders of the ancient world. After all, it's a universal phenomenon. Flyaways, the regular flight patterns birds take to wintering and breeding grounds, crisscross the entire globe. Poets once marveled at the spectacular annual migrations of passenger pigeons, which would blot out the sky for miles. But the neural mechanism behind migrations remained unknown. Early experimentation on tracking bird migration was innovative. On cloudless nights, bird watchers would count the number of bird flocks they saw silhouette silhouetted against the full moon. Today we've progressed to tagging, radio, and satellite methods, methods that have allowed us to unravel some of the mysteries of bird migration. So why do birds migrate? All birds have the ability to learn migration. Research suggests that the cognitive ability behind migration was present in theropod dinosaurs from which modern birds evolved. In the Jurassic, certain lineages migrated periodically from Guantanaland north to Laurasia to breed away from the threat of predators. Now, back to the modern bird. How do birds migrate? A young bird on his first migration relies on a variety of navigation methods to reach wintering grounds. It's a variety that's evolutionarily adaptive. When the sky is clouded, the bird can orient itself to the Earth's magnetic field. And when the sky is clear, or the bird is near enough to the magnetic equator to make geomagnetic orientation ambiguous, it might rely on celestial navigation, using the sun and stars, in combination with its internal clock, or circadian rhythm, to orient itself instead. The cognition behind migration is headquartered in the hippocampus, which, in both birds and humans, is the site of spatial reasoning and memory. After their first migration, birds begin to use more than innate directional orientation. They learn visual landmarks along the migration route, developing a hippocampal mental map that allows them to return to the same wintering site each year. But what about the effect of migration on hippocampal growth? Is it possible that neuronal growth can occur in the adult bird after it has passed the critical periods of adolescence? Let's take a trip around the world to Tel Aviv, Israel, to find out. Here are the spring breeding grounds for innumerable bird species that, come winter, flock in the thousands to warm Mediterranean coast of North Africa. It's a distance of over a thousand miles and one that the turtle dove and reed warbler undertake every November. In 2015, Shea Barkin and colleagues at the University of Tel Aviv studied several of these birds in the Jordan Valley of Israel as they were about to fly west to North Africa. Using stable isotopes carbon-13 and hydrogen-2 in the feathers, they were able to track the birds' migration distances. Furthermore, neuronal recruitment was measured in specialized regions of the avian brains, the hippocampal complex, or HC, responsible for navigation, and the nidopallium caudilateral, or NCL, responsible for communication. Barkin and his colleagues hypothesized that increased migration distance correlates with increased neuronal recruitment. Their reasoning? Birds migrating greater distances are exposed to more diverse spatial information, ultimately bettering their social behavioral adaptation, predator avoidance, and reproductive and foraging behaviors. Recall that the brain is plastic. Greater neuronal recruitment in the relevant regions of the brain in migratory birds would account for increased adaptive learning ability. So what did the study find? Well, the researchers weren't wrong. New neuronal growth does increase with migration distance. It's apparent that, for turtle doves, it's an increase in neuronal recruitment in the NCL, but not the hippocampus, that occurs in birds flying longer distances. But reed warblers evidence increased neuronal recruitment in the HC, but not the NCL. It's a curious finding, but there may be an explanation for it. Reed warblers are lone nocturnal migrators, relying heavily on navigational cues, like orientation to the stars. It's likely that this navigational reliance results in increased neuronal activity in the navigational region of the HC. Turtle doves, on the other hand, migrate as a flock, so communication between flock members is key. Accordingly, those regions of the NCL responsible for communication show increased neuronal growth. The result of this discovery could even apply to us humans. It was believed that new neuronal growth could not occur in the adult brain, that growth only occurred until maturity, after which came a period of neuronal decline. However, synaptic pruning and strengthening occurs. It's called long-term potentiation, which is key in learning and memory and also underlies synaptic plasticity. Long-term potentiation is a result of increased exposure to new information from continuous stimuli, leading to a strengthened postsynaptic cell response. 
In short, what we humans do and learn day to day promotes neuronal recruitment and contributes to how our brains adapt, and thus how we adapt to our environment. We are vehicles of our own evolution.